Alright everybody, how's it going? And welcome to 1985, <laughs> basically. Um, I just wanted to make a video and uh, share this uh, dementia, basically complete dementia system that I picked up uh, about a week ago. Um, well, uh, I guess I'll start there. Um, so a friend of mine, uh, Josh, and I, as well as many other people, uh, collect RCA video disc players and um, RCA also uh, made lots of uh, different peripheral um, items that you could add on and uh, originally I was interested in the um, just the disc player and uh, the VCR and um, the tuner combo in the uh, command, original command center combination but uh, something about the dementia system is uh, definitely intriguing and um, decided that I wanted to get one, well, not one, but I wanted to try to seek as many of the components as I could. Uh, initially, I really wanted just the uh, command center television, and we found one at a thrift store, but it was a later uh, 1988 model, uh, Color Track 2000, which worked actually just fine, but it didn't have the command center. Uh, capabilities uh, like I'm about to demonstrate here in a minute. Um, so back in 1984 uh, this unit cost about five thousand dollars if you wanted everything. Um, I don't know if that includes the wood cabinets that you see here um, but this particular model uh, was bought by a gentleman that lived in Rhode Island. Uh, he paid about four thousand dollars for it in uh, 1985 and uh, basically the guy was an audiophile, a uh, videophile. He did lots of recording. He had uh, basically every format there was uh, besides CEDs. He had Laserdisc, uh, early VHS, late VHS, Betamax. Um, he had Super 8 um, and audio. He had uh, mini disc players and cassette players, record players, phonographs. You know, I know they're different. Some people think they are. Anyway, um... He, the guy the guy had everything and uh, this unfortunately was um, it sat for a while uh, in the basement um, it uh, probably hadn't been turned on if I had to guess in at least five or seven years um, honestly I can only estimate I don't know for sure but it sat for a while um, there were a lot of cats in the house uh, a lot of dander and dust um, it did sit plugged in but it didn't ever get turned on um, I wish I knew more about the story but what I do know is is that they didn't want to part it out and a lot of people uh, this was an eBay find thanks to my friend Josh um, he uh, he sent me the link and um, Basically, it was pickup only, which was obvious. You don't want to ship something like this, and uh, they didn't want to part it out. And I was the only person uh, in the New England area who called. This was in Rhode Island, by the way. I live in Connecticut, and uh, I I was the only one who was willing to drive to go get the whole unit, uh, and you know keep it um, because that's what I want. I I would never in my dreams uh, decide to pick up something like this and part out what I don't want. This is, this is like, you know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to get the whole, you know, I, I've been, I, I've been trying to find individual components, uh, throughout the years and I've not come up with very much, uh, mainly command center televisions, later ones, but nothing dementia. So to find the whole dementia system together and for sale at a reasonable price, um, pretty much couldn't pass that opportunity up. Um, my girlfriend just happened to get her tax return uh, right when this came up for sale and uh, basically we didn't think twice about it. Um, had to borrow a truck from my buddy Joe because uh, we only have two cars and putting both of these in two cars probably would have been difficult. Uh, it was about a hundred mile one way trip just to get to Rhode Island. Um, so I was fortunate enough to have a friend let me borrow his truck and um, so I, I basically got everything uh, back home. Uh, I needed about a week to go through everything. 
Um, unfortunately, a lot of the components didn't work. Um, some of them I had to extensively go through, <coughs> excuse me, extensively go through um, and try to repair. Um, unfortunately, some of them just couldn't be repaired. Uh, they're hard circuit board error issues. Uh, one of them had a lot of smoke let out of it, um, which you'll see the pictures. Uh, all the pictures that I have will be posted before the video, so you'll be able to see uh, all the different things that I went through, uh, basically to get to the point where I'm at now. So what you see in front of you is the FKC 2601T uh, wood grain monitor and the glass uh, front piece actually is in there, um, which is lucky because that is probably pretty fragile. Um, in conjunction, uh, typically when you buy the system, you get the VKT 700 VCR, uh, which I could not fix. Uh, magic smoke got wet out of it. Uh, you plug it in, on-screen display just constantly flashes a screen's worth of A's with tilde's on top, and uh, I couldn't. I don't have service literature for any of the dementia stuff. If anybody does, uh, I would really appreciate um, any information that I could get because uh, I'm really trying to make every piece I have uh, function. Uh, anyway, so what I do have, though, is a 5-head uh, VTR unit, which is like the older VKP900. Uh, the model number on the back says MVR975HFT. That's on the tuner timer. Uh, I don't know if that's actually the model or not, but... This one, the VTR, I replaced all the belts in it, and the VTR itself works, but the tuner timer deck does not. Nothing lights up. It has no functionality. You can't control it with the remote, uh, although you can turn it on with the remote, but that's about it. Um, it does not have the video out and in outputs like the earlier VKP, VJP uh, VCR, so unfortunately I can't do anything at the moment until the tuner timer works which stinks because the other uh, VKT700 actually plays video, but it has no audio out, um, and the on-screen display is stuck flashing. Um, also, I received the MSA100 amplifier, which is uh, 50 watts, um, root mean squared per channel at about 8 ohm load. Um, but also I got the MSA200, which is 100 watts RMS per channel at 8 ohms. Um, and it also is uh, paired with the MGE-160 10-band graphic equalizer. Now this, uh, initially I had issues with, um, I had everything plugged in, but was only getting audio out of one channel, and I couldn't understand what was going on. Uh, eventually I plugged a pair of headphones into it, and uh, there's only two buttons on the equalizer. It's power, and you can just turn the equalizer off, but leave the power on, I guess. And I just pushed the button probably 50 or 60 times, and not literally, but uh, eventually I got stereo out of it. Um, I was really bummed at first that I didn't get stereo, and once I fixed that, it basically motivated me to fix every other component that I could from there. Um, so in... in uh, also, with everything else, there's the MAT-110 AM-FM tuner, which uh, works. That's, it's all, there's no moving parts in it, so there's nothing to fix. But I got two MTR-120 cassette players. Unfortunately, neither of them make audio. Uh, they play cassettes. Uh, I've, they fast-forward, rewind, everything works. The displays, one of them lights up dimmer than the other. I don't know if one is older than the other but neither of them make audio. They only will play the tape. Um, also, I received the MCD-140 CD player, and I cannot get the drawer to eject on that as well. So, um, to be honest with you, I don't really have any CDs to check it right now with, because that's an early CD player, and I guarantee you every CD I have is just too scratched for it. Um, early CD players are really sensitive, and basically... Even particles of dust made the old CD players skip. Maybe that's just my experience with them. But um, the one thing that I was able to fix was the MTT-135 phonograph uh, direct drive linear tracking turntable. And this thing sounds just as good as it looks. Uh, I was worried that 
it was going to have major issues considering that a lot of the other components didn't work. But being that the turntable was direct drive, I, I had actually given this some hope. So I took the unit apart on, uh, without service information, which I don't normally do, but I really needed to get this to work. I have a lot of records I wanted to list, <clears throat> excuse me, listen to, and uh, I decided that taking it apart uh, after an inspection internally of it would reveal that it just has a top cover and everything else stays on the base. So I removed the top cover. Uh, I saw that the uh, stylus uh, or needle tracking was powered by a belt, and uh, I found just something around the house just temporarily to uh, get it to work. Um, put a belt in it, and basically that's all it took. Uh, I found it would play a record without the the tracking of the needle, but you had to keep bumping it along obviously and it just that's not how a record player works so I took the time to take it apart and you know check its functionality and and it works great so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the video disc player uh, and then I'll play a record for you guys um, and then I'll go through basically all of the other components uh, I'm gonna control everything with the remote that I can the system still has some quirks in it that I can't fully figure out. If everything is already on and then you turn the disc player on, the display comes on the bottom of the screen and it's not supposed to. It should be on the top of the screen. So I'm going to start with the player first. Uh, when you turn the player on, it turns the television and the tuner on. Um, I'll pop a disc in there real quick for you. Um, it shows on the CED Magic page uh, Hall & Oates playing on there. So I'll play a little bit of Hall & Oates for you guys real quick and then uh, I'll carry on. Uh, I've only got about 17 minutes left on this memory so I'll be quick. So you press the power button, turns the television, says system component, turns the uh, equalizer on. queuing up here. Now this disc is also banded so this allows me to use the band function so I will put in band 5 for you. Press seek. And it will seek right to it. You see it has a separate display player is up here. Uh, command center uh, language is up below. And there you go. Give her a quick little fast forward. Double fast forward. Alright. I'm going to pop this out here. If you guys want to jam the Hall of Oats, uh, I suggest you get this disc. It's actually pretty good. Me and my old lady love jamming to this. Alright, so unfortunately if you hit off, it doesn't shut the player off. But if you hit off twice, it should shut everything off. The television uh, IR receiver is the main uh, pickup for all of this, so you have to aim the remote at the television. So next what we'll do is we'll turn on the record player here. All I have to do is hit phono, and I hit it twice actually. Once turns on this, once turns on the record player. Grab a record. Uh, I believe ZZ Top's Eliminator would be appropriate. As you see, the turntable pulls out. Just drop a record on there. Uh, there's a couple different, you can play it with the drawer open as well, uh, but for this, uh, we're going to close the drawer. The command should come up on the screen. Oh, I don't have the television on. Sorry about that. 
you want to know what's going on, you got to have the television on. So the phone was on stop right now. With the remote, I can hit play. Oops, got to put it on phono first. And, uh, should play. And there you go. So now if I'm listening to a record, here, let me turn this down so I'm not yelling over it. Listening to a record, uh, oh, uh, let me see if I can listen to the radio for a second. All you have to do is hit AM, FM on the remote, switches you to uh, the radio. You got all your preset channels. Now, mind you, the record's still spinning right now. You can hit pause and it will pause the record, but I'm not going to do that. Slip through. Uh, oh, geez, of course, as usual, there's nothing good on the radio. So you can go right back to the record player. It'll pick up uh, the tracks as you go. So if you really enjoy a side of your record, it'll uh, let you go back to a certain uh, track, or as this, in this case, it calls it a band. Basically, anything you can do with the remote, you can do on the player itself. But let's uh, go ahead and kick this record out here. Hit stop. Phone will stop. Come over here and hit eject. Okay, just give me a second here and put this away. And there you go. So now what I'm going to do is just shut everything off here. So now you see I have the radio on as well as the record player and the television. So what I'll do is just hit off and everything, I hit off twice and everything shuts off. Just like that. All right, so I got, oh, I still got some time left, about 11 and a half minutes. So uh, what I'll do is I'll take you on a little tour here. All right, so basically in this cabinet here, um, now uh, one thing that I didn't mention is that I also received, uh, excuse me, I received four SPK 375 with their AVS 300E stands. Um, Two of them say RCA Dementia on them, and two of them say just RCA, although functionally they are the same. Um, unfortunately, mold had gotten the better part of the cones, and um, without repairing the speakers, I can't just see myself using them. Uh, they're pretty deteriorated. They are saveable. I just need to figure out what I'm going to do. And also, as you can see, I don't really have room for them right now. Just have some temporary cheapy... Uh, speakers hooked up. Uh, they do the job for now. I, I plan on getting something a lot better later. Um, so as you can see in the far left cabinet uh, is my Sears player uh, with a corded remote. Below this is the five head VCR and below that is the mini disc player that I got as a bonus uh, out of the family's generosity. Um, I showed them how to fix their video disc player that they kept and they gave me the mini disc player as a thank you. Unfortunately it plays a disc, but it doesn't put audio out as well. I'm not sure what happened, but so this is, oops, this is the five head VCR. Um, again, I don't really know what model it is specifically unless that's what it is on the back. Here's the mini disc player. Um, and I have all my VHSs that I watch on the regular down here. Um, nothing special. Of course, all my video discs are off in their respective cabinets. As you saw, the record player is up here. And down is the integrated amplifier, graphic equalizer, AM FM tuner, and both of my cassette players. And it's a little hard to see, but down there is the CD player. Um, you can't, I can't even, I had to unplug it uh, because it just, 
it's angry when you plug it in. I hit the eject button and it it did something awful. So I'm just going to leave that for now. I'm eventually going to take into it, but at the moment I just don't have the time for it. Um, so here obviously is the television. And one of the things that I had always thought was cool is that they gave you storage space for whatever. And in this case, usually they show discs. Um, being that I have a 400 series player as well as every other model in the J line, uh, I collected all of the interactive discs as well as box sets, uh, et cetera, although I don't have the Rocky box set. But um, also, I collect RCA property, and it just so happens that all of the property stamp discs that I own fit in here. So this, this was like a little bonus to me. Um, it holds all my specialty discs. Um, well, of course, except for a walk through the universe, which has its own little dock of love over there. I can constantly look at it and enjoy it. But, so there's that. And then in here, I just have my Zenith VP4000, which in its own right is cool, and it definitely deserves a spot in this RCA command center, even though it's a Zenith piece. Um, not a player you're going to see just every day, so uh, definitely a prize of mine. Uh, again, through my buddy Josh, uh, just he finds everything and uh, he he lets me know about it, and I just so I don't know. Somehow I end up with this stuff. Same thing with a walk through the universe and the dementia system. Uh, can't thank Josh enough for helping me out with all these finds. Uh, don't know how he does it. I don't ask questions. <laughs> so anyway, in here, uh, I just uh, had some other players I didn't know what to do with. Um, so I have my SJT 101 uh, demonstration model and my SJT 200. Um, also, I have just all of my extra remotes. Um, I have all of the different various models of uh, stick remote. There's three of them. And I have all of the different various command center remotes, um, actual player specific for the 400 remotes. Um, I have more records. I just I keep these in here just because these are the most common ones. Also, I have RCA uh, service data for all J line players, uh, some G line players, also uh, SFT 100. And um, what really was awesome is that this dementia system came with a whole, basically, book of all of everything that you'd need to know about it. So, you know, it's basically just got all the tabs of, you know, and um, I noticed somebody was curious why they, uh, the components all had different colored little squares on them. You can't really see, but this one's green and that one's black and that one's brown or whatever. They all have different colors. Um, it's so you can relate to them in the manual. You see all the different tabs, excuse me, have different colors. See the VCR is gold and the amplifier is green and, um, you know, and, and so on and so on. So, um, somebody, I heard somebody saying that it had to do with what year uh, that the component was put out, um, but that, that really has nothing to do with it. I believe that just allows you to search through the literature more efficiently, perhaps, or, I don't know, more properly identify what your issue is. Anyway, um, one more quick thing, too. Uh, I also have uh, a laptop that I uh, plug in and I can use the dementia system to listen to you know YouTube videos or whatever it is so that way I don't have the stupid little laptop speaker going on there but so basically that's that's it um, I know this is like a 25 minute video but it's it's a lot I mean basically I I got word of it on uh, Wednesday um, by Friday, I, I was borrowing a truck to go pick it up. Uh, it sat in my house for the weekend, um, you know, just so I could get my affairs in order with my old color track and command center stuff. Uh, I had to get all that moved out. And, uh, you know, I had to clean everything. Everything was really dusty. I had to vacuum everything out. Um, I, I had to try to repair whatever I could. Um, you know, and eventually I, I just basically gave myself a week, uh, to get that done. And basically this is the point that I'm at now. So if anybody has any sort of, uh, suggestions or service literature, info, 
uh, comments, complaints, gripes, you know, you just want to tell me that I'm cool, you know, feel free to leave me an email. Um, but basically that's it. Um, if there's anybody out there who may also have components for sale, like the VCR or, um, you know, the, any of the tape decks, uh, I would love to have, you know, working components as well. Um, um, yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, hope, you know, sometime in the future somebody else gets something cool like this, because there's got to be more of these out there somewhere.